Hi, this is Mick Elliott from Electronic Specifier, and uh, I'm on the NXP stand with Brian Carson, who is uh, becoming a regular guest for us, having appeared at Electronica last year and indeed Embedded World uh, last year as well. So great to see you, Brian. I think we're going to talk about software-defined vehicles and the technologies behind that uh, today. So uh, maybe you can start to give us a little bit of background on where NXP is headed into this market. Yeah, sure. So last year at the show, we talked about electric vehicle and the, the, the brain of the EV. And then electronic, we talked about the, the brain of the electric motor. And now we're taking the next level up, which is the brain of the whole vehicle or you know, the vehicle computer, which for, for going forward for software defined vehicles is the key box, the key brain of the vehicle. And, uh, you know, so what we're introducing today, or actually launched today, is the S32 uh, th uh, G3. So the S32 G2 has been in production for about a year and a half, which I'm showing right here. And so this is a supercomputer that goes into the vehicle, and we talk about the vehicle compute for SDVs. Uh, on this device, there's actually 30 processor cores. Uh, yeah, 21 of those are ARM cores. Uh, so there's quite a lot of processing. Uh, and we're bringing in technology that is kind of cloud native technologies like Kubernetes, and that's what we're showing here, is how we can actually deploy and monitor applications or services on the vehicle on this chip. Uh, the interesting thing about this device, it has not only real-time processing and application processing, but vehicle networking accelerators. So we accelerate and offload all that network traffic, and we support multiple gigabit ethernet ports, 20 CAN ports, so it's a powerhouse not only in the processing side, but the networking side. So we bring all that together in that small little package. And what we're showing in the demonstration today is Kubernetes running on the platform and we can have multiple processes running simultaneously. And everything you're seeing here, both the, uh, the graphical display, which is Grafana, we're running Prometheus for event management and we're running the whole Kubernetes K3S. All of that is running on this small little chip and we're just logging in and monitoring it remotely. So you could be anywhere in the world and, and monitoring what's going on. Um, this comes as part of our support called Gold VIP, which is a software package, a vehicle integration package that brings the complete stack together from firmware and drivers and OS all the way up to the, the cloud, the Kubernetes support. So this is free out of the box on nxp.com. Uh, the boards are available through distribution and you're able to very quickly to be able to do cloud-enabled services, to, to develop services that can be deployed uh, on Kubernetes and uh, it's a, a great point for car makers to develop SDVs, the brain of the SDV. And that's what we're doing here. Okay, where, where are you seeing automotive makers applying this in, in various vehicles? How are, they, how are they going about that? Yeah, it's interesting because right now the industry is going through a major transition, basically brain surgery and heart surgery at the same time, right? They're changing out the components where they're going much larger with these multi-core types of devices instead of a lot of little micros or uh, instead of 100 boxes, maybe five to seven boxes to really consolidate and to leverage this, to minimize the wires, to minimize the weight. Uh, and so they're moving this direction. So this device fits very well in the vehicle computer in the central part of the vehicle. We also have the S32E and Z that we talked about last summer, and we have the uh, S32K, which is at the edge. So we have devices for those different parts of the vehicle, of these new software-defined vehicles that are using zonal architectures. Vehicle computer, and you have um, you know, the processing at the zones, at the edges, and we have a whole, lot, you know, a whole range of processors for those different processing needs. Okay, it looks like scalability has been important there, and is that carrying on into the future? Actually, I'm glad you asked that question. So scalability is very key. So this is the S32G3. It's pinout and software compatible with the S32G2, which has four devices. This fits in the same socket or same pinout, same software, but now I can actually scale from like 3K up to 36K, a very large dynamic range of processing, all with the same footprint technology. So they all have the same same design, I plug in and I can upgrade. So scalability is really important for different tiers of vehicles, as well as that product over time, they may want to increase the performance so they can install different versions of that same device with more memory, with more cores, and that gives them the scalability. So I'm glad you asked, because that's a very important part of these future vehicles is scalability. And I guess one of the interesting things now from your point of view is, you know, it brings together NXP expertise both in software and hardware. 
that's a great point, is that this is not only in the past, it was more hardware about networking and automotive processing and safety and security. The next level now with these software-defined vehicles is all about software. So with this Gold VIP where we have the complete set of software now, it has to bring expertise across all the hardware plus that whole software stack up to cloud native technologies and even into virtualization of our processor and ECUs and vehicles in the cloud. So working with car makers to virtualize this in the cloud, develop software, test it, and then deploy it to the vehicle in a continuous integration, continuous deployment or CICD process. That's what's new here. It's not just the chip and the software, it's the cloud. And how all that development is transformed into this cycle of using over-the-air updates and doing development and virtualization in the cloud. So it's it's really an exciting area, but a big disruption for everyone, you know, from suppliers to automakers. But you know, surprisingly, it's gone fairly well. But there's a lot of complexity that's, like I said, heart surgery and brain surgery at the same time. So I guess this requires a bit of mutual support, if you like, between you and the car makers. Yes, definitely. And that's really interesting too, is over, especially over the last few years, is the relationship between the OEM and silicon vendors like us that are very strategic. We work closely with the OEMs and looking ahead and not only for supply side, but also for technology and road mapping and making sure that the silicon that's coming will fit their needs and into the future, especially with SDV. Now they want to have more control over the overall architecture, the road map of where they're going, and they need to have that strategic collaborative relationship with the ecosystem, including the silicon provider. So it's not just like the old days where I write a spec, someone builds the box and they provide it to the OEM. You have to be very tightly integrated or collaborative with the OEM to get it right, because it's a massive undertaking for everyone, and that relationship becomes really critical. Okay, and the, the device is in production now? Yeah, so that's what we're talking about here is we're in mass production of this device. So you can go through distribution, uh, the normal distribution channel for NXP, uh, the boards, the chip, the software is available online on NXP.com, so that's already there. Um, so yes, it's fully available, and we expect that this device will not only be in vehicle computers, one thing I didn't mention is this is also used in a lot of uh, ADAS and autonomous drive systems as a safety processor. It has the performance needed for modern systems that need very, very high level performance of safety. It also forms that role. Um, so this device is available for vehicle computers, safety solutions, and I would expect in the distribution market, mass market, we'll see this in robotics, motor control, um, other types of industrial gateways, and other compute. So uh, this, I think this will be a popular device, not only in automotive, but in adjacent markets like industrial and transportation. Brian Carlson from NXP, thank you very much. Thank you, great to see you again. Thanks. Thank you.